They'd been traveling almost three days. They stopped at a small human town the day before, and Eowyn was able to get herself cleaned up. The one that called himself Vlados even gave her some new clothing. He was doing his best to be kind to her and keep her calm, even though his magic that let them communicate only lasted for about half an hour at a time. Lucia, his companion, had so far refused to talk to Eowyn at all after their first meeting, when she warned her that she would kill her if she tried anything, whatever that meant. The closest they'd come to a conversation was when she angrily demanded something of her after she'd been washed and changed, before giving up when she realized Eowyn couldn't understand her. Once Vlados had cast his spell again, he explained that apparently Lucia thought she was much younger than she was when she first saw her and felt tricked after seeing her actually looking her age. She didn't understand how someone else assuming she was a child could count as her tricking them and not just them being wrong, but she didn't understand much of anything about these strange people. They were moving deeper and deeper into another forest now. In the distance, she could hear what sounded like a woman's voice angrily screaming and occasionally punctuated with cheers and boos. She looked behind her at Lucia, who had her bow out. Though it wasn't pointed at her, the meaning was still obvious. She gave a hesitant smile, but the other girl only scowled back at her, so she turned back around. Suntim apropi akola akum. She looked at Vlados, confusion on her face. He stared back for a moment, then comically slapped his forehead and cast tongues. Sorry, keep forgetting. I said we're almost there. It uh, sounds like the Elder is giving one of her speeches. I think you'll like her. Everyone likes Elder Rima. Did she say sacrifice? Uh, yes, sounded like that, but don't worry. I'm sure it's fine. Ah, uh, here is the entrance. And there ahead of them were a pair of dead trees of a kind Eowyn didn't recognize, flanking either side of a wooden gate. She looked up at the gnarled gray branches and could almost swear they were moving against the light wind. What kind of trees are those? Just some old dead oaks. We use them as a marker. Just walk through the gate with us, okay? Don't go around either sides and don't touch the trees, at least those two. We don't want them falling over or anything. They passed through the gate and headed down a now easily visible hard-packed path towards what looked like a small cluster of wooden houses. Eowyn looked back again, and behind Lucia, she watched in horror as an eye suddenly appeared on one of the dead trees and looked directly at her. This is Pot Against the Machine. Pot Against the Machine. Welcome back to Pot Against the Machine, the only Pathfinder actual play that comes with a helpful pamphlet on the joys of dumpster diving. I'm your host, and here's everybody. Hi. It's literally free real estate with edible food in there. Go get it. Hello. Hello. Let's see. Last week, the party healed up after their encounter with the dragons and did a little poison delaying technique to help the Schlorpy snake not feel quite so bad. And then they headed off into the valley chasing these tracks that Tarazi found. They were able to track it a few miles in, up around a bend and down to the south up a hill into a cave where they found a bunch of penitent androids who were devotees of a cult out of Dravid Nock devoted to destroying all technology possibly including themselves at some future date, though they were a bit vague on that part of it. Uh, they wanted the party to turn over all of their technology for destruction. The party did not want that. Things got a little bit hairy, but eventually Alwyn was able to sort of de-escalate things and avoid a fight 
that seemed to be coming. After that, they were just like a tiny bit helpful. They offered that there were lots of other people in the valley, including unspeakable horrors that one shouldn't ever visit, let alone speak of, uh, some kind of farmer, and uh, some kind of humanoid being with four arms who was probably the one responsible for blowing up the big robot at the cave entrance, or at the valley entrance. So the party said their goodbyes to their not-friends, who uh, are definitely going to hold you to your promises of destroying all technological items when your quest is over. And uh, then the party doubled back looking for that farmer, hoping that maybe that's a more reasonable being who might offer a little bit more in the way of information. Uh, on the way back, they plunged through a little bit of a forest along the southern wall of the valley where they came to a rather smelly semi-clearing. While exploring the stinky clearing, one of the trees reached out and clawed Kira. That set off a fight against these horrible alien Yangeeths, of which there's only one. I don't know why anyone would ever say that there was more than one. Uh, the party was doing pretty well, though. Uh, Brixby shot it with some fire, which seemed to hurt, and um, Tarazi and Levi got some nice strikes in on the thing, and it looked like it was pretty badly hurt. Then it let loose a burst of psychic energy that hurt Kira, Levi, Tarazi, and Alwyn, and also left Kira and Alwyn confused. And that's where we are now, still in the middle of initiative. Everybody feeling pretty good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, without further ado, we ended at the end of the affectionate Ying Eath's turn. Uh, that brings us to surprising everyone, because no one knew about this. The second Yang Eath, the heroic Yang Eath which, a little ways up to the north, was watching as Brixby shot rays of fire. And, um, it's not dumb. It's gonna come on down to the south. Um, kind of to the southeast. Stop about ten feet away from Brixby. Uh, it's gonna just real quickly cast a spell on itself. And then it's gonna reach out with one of its tentacles and try to grab Brixby. Is that spell a swift action? It can do that? Uh, it is a quickened spell-like ability. Okay. So yeah, that's swifty. I don't remember all that well. What's the bonus for true strike? Is that a plus 20 or a plus 30? <laughs> that's a 20. Okay. It's a plus 20. So, uh, oh, okay. so a 35 yeah. to hit Brixby with the tentacle? Yeah, 100%. Okay. So not a lot of damage here, just eight damage with the tentacle. Uh, the bigger deal is the free attempt to grab, which is a 38 to grapple the mouse man. 100%. Yes. You know, these Absolutely. These things are dangerously intelligent tree monsters. Um, Brixby is grappled. Doesn't the disc add like 25 to your CMD? Oh, yeah. Probably. Absolutely. <laughs> So, um, that brings us to Izzy and Kira. Um, can, you, can we get a D100 roll, Kira? Yeah. It's a 60. Well, 60 is deals 1D8 points of damage plus strength modifier to self with the item in hand. So, you hit yourself in the face with a chainsaw. That's okay. That's, that's of the best. That's, I'm okay with that. Let's roll it in the guy. 1D8 plus. I'm not raging. That's something. Seven damages. Seven chainsaw damage to the face. Just clipped it. All right, and you've got four rounds of confusion left. Um, Alwyn, how about you bounce a D100? Uh, so that's a 40. 40 is, does nothing but babble incoherently. Okay. So he does that for his round. That's one of the best results. Yeah. At least he didn't hit himself in the face or run over and attack Brixby. Brixby has enough problems right now. I do. And it is his turn. He is grappled. He's in a tentacle. <sighs> All right. Well, um, that's going to be pretty rough. But hey, I'm going to try it, I guess. So, yeah, I'm going to try to escape from the 
grapple using an escape artist role and probably regret not putting a ton into this. Brixby unfortunately rolls a six on his escape artist check for an 18. Uh, How does an 18 do? An 18 leaves you still stuck in the tentacle of this horrible, horrible beast. All right. So I think that is my situation right now. My reality. Yup. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. I guess I'm going to end my turn all grappled. Please help me. <laughs> all right. Um, that brings us to Levi and Tarazi. Yeah, I think we'll we'll start with Levi in hopes that if somehow we can bring one Yangeef down, then Tarazi can charge at the other one. Wow. Uh, yeah, no. A nat one and a nat two from the big snake. Glad I got those out of the way. Ouch. Uh, and now three uh, power attack bastard sword swings coming at you from the medium snake. Wow. Four, five, but 17 on the lowest bab, bringing it up to a 23. And that's your best roll of the lot? Yeah. Uh, 23 is the AC of this fella. So uh, so that is a critical threat with my improved critical. Uh, nice. It's going to be hard to confirm because <laughs> I need to roll a 17 or higher. Uh, wait, actually, no, I have flanking from my, from my big snake. I'm silly. I have to roll a 15 or higher. Others were all misses. Totally garbage roll. And I got a 15 on the die. So yes. with the flank, that's a crit? Is that what I'm hearing? With the flank, that is the 23. All right. So just a quick 2d10 plus 28. Uh, so that's 40. So finally, some good news in this uh, fight as the affectionate Yang Yi is dead. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic job. Uh, full attack, but can still take a five foot step. <laughs> and I'll just inch closer to Brixby. <laughs> Well, the heroic Yangi is uh, going to, as part of a standard action to maintain the grapple, roll a touch attack on our poor grappled mouse friend. That is a 27 versus touch AC. Definitely. Yes, Mike, you definitely hit my grappled touch AC. Four charisma drain for Brixby. Damn as his emotions are just like sucked out of him by these tiny filaments that let come out of the tentacle the mouth tentacles i guess and just like leach into his skin and they're like draining like the ver viv whatever i can't words you know the joie de vivre Virgie biv his rainbow essence. yes my vive all my vive yo this sucks y'all um, on the plus side, um, that was about all it could do. Luckily for Brixby, he weighs more than 50 pounds. Yeah, Kira, you're up. I need a D100. That is a 67. Got another yeah. cell phone. Yep. Um, Kira is fighting the battle of Kira versus Kira. Well, haven't murdered a snake, so that's good. All right. Alwyn. I, mean, I can't remember if high is good or low is good, but I'm hoping it's low because that was a 12. With a 12, you can act normally. Oh, thank God. Okay, uh, Alwyn, <laughs> uh shaking out of his uh, confusion temporarily, sees Brixby getting eaten by a tree and goes, I told you, they're not good when they're like that. Uh, he is going to move up to the northeast here to get within five feet of Brixby and kind of reach around the tree vines on him in order to touch him and cast freedom of movement. That's big right there. That is huge. The bricks be is yes. bricks free. Yeah, but now I'm like five feet away from this tree when it decides to grab me instead. 
XP is free of the tree now, and it cannot grab him again until the uh, spell wears off, and it is 10 minutes a level, so he's got a good while. Bless you. All right, uh, Brixby, you're feeling a little bit drained, a little bit under the weather, a little bit dejuiced, but you're free. Things are rough right now in Brixby land. Yeah, so uh, for context, I have like a four charisma. Not the rubber face just isn't fitting right now. Yeah, with my ill-fitting rubber face, Brixby disappears. <laughs> uh, he's very, well, first he says, thank you, friend, and pets Alwyn, which is our love language. <laughs> and then he uh, casts invisibility upon himself. And then disc, disc away, 30 feet, and I'm invisible. That's my vibe. All right, that'll bring us to Levi and Tarazi. All right, Levi will slurp forward 40 feet, and he has 10 feet of reach, so he can just get, play the reach game and try and bite this heroic Zangief. It's going to have to bear hug you. That's a dirty 30. A dirty 30 will hit. Uh, 15 points of damage. Not too bad. And the grapple check. 39 versus CMD. So close, but no. Are you kidding me? So that's good to know because uh, peek behind the curtain, that was a natural 19. <laughs> oh, oh. But all right, fair is fair. So it can be done, you know? We, we learned something. It can. Yeah. And then rushing up, Tarazi will get a single swing in with the Bastard Sword. And it's going to whiff on that claw as Tarazi comes in. Sweet. We, we learned 23 hits. Uh, 23 hits, exactly. Ha-ha! That natural seven came in clutch. Uh, middling 18 points of damage. All right, it's not nothing. That'll do her. Scaly boy's out. All right, at the end of the scaly turn, that brings us to the heroic Yangith. And um, it's just going to let loose one of these psychic blaster roos. So I'm going to need a will save from everybody but Kira. Let's start with the orderly Brixby. Okay. That's a 17 for a 27. All right. So Brixby is going to take 13 non-lethal. He's not confused. Oof. Excellent. How about Tarazi? <laughs> uh, 12. Oof. That is 27 non-lethal damage. And Tarazi is confused for the minimum only one round. All right, all right. Which is very, very good. Yeah. Um, how about Levi? Oh, boy. Uh, nat one. Ooh. So, 27 damage as well. And he's rocking that four rounds of confusion. Yuck. And my dear Alwyn, who is already confused. Uh, hopefully this is high enough. I got six higher than last time for a 22. All right, so Alwyn only takes 13 non-lethal. Does not re-up the confusion. And, um, Yangith is gonna just float. Did I mention it's floating? Yeah, it's no. like kind of walking on air. Is Is how I would describe it with its weird spidery leg roots. It's just gonna kind of five, wo- five foot floaty walk back a little bit and that brings us to kira uh once again a d100 roll how's a 58 sam oh no <laughs> poor kira <laughs> she is very angry at herself tonight not my night i have not done anything useful it's no surprise to me I am so how much damage did kira do for herself just for our reference Ah, uh, seven. Seven damage. See, if she was hitting a monster, that would have been like 70 damage is the thing. Yeah. That makes yeah. this not fair. <laughs> um, all right, we are to the top of round four. Uh, Alwyn, that D100 roll. 
30... Is that a 1 or a 7? 37. Going back to the chart, that is uh, do nothing but babble incoherently. Okay, he babbles again. And you know what? Just to flavor it up, he does it in a different language <laughs> than whatever he babbled in last time, because I know like 12. <laughs> nice. The tree seems to understand at least one of the languages. Uh, that'll bring us to Brixby. You're invisible. You don't know this, but you're the only one who's not confused. <laughs> <laughs> so Brixby is going to swift action spurn gravity, which is an element of his uh, 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 magical trick floating disc, which allows him to uh, just fly up about he's going to just only go about 30 feet up on his desk but it uh, moves the hours to rounds and allows him to move at 50 feet per uh, round and have no altitude um, limitation so he's going to hover up there and from his invisible position he is going to rain down three scorching rays on the remaining Zangief can't get that out of my head now. So that is a 15 versus touch, a 23 versus touch, and a 13 versus touch. So those all hit, but I do need an SR roll first. Alrighty, let's get that for you there. Alrighty. Please old spello resistance no it's a 17 <laughs> yeah it fizzles all right and brixby is visible and uh that was the end of his turn swift action move action and failed attack action all right so we've got tarazi and levi who wants to make that d100 roll first oh let's go for levi a 44. Um, let's see, that is babbling coherently. When you're a slorpy snake, is it burbling incoherently? Perfect. Yeah, that's going to be awful. I'm glad I'm editing this one. Uh, and <laughs> for Tarazi. Uh oh, that's a 94. Uh oh. Attacks the nearest creature. No. Oh, oh no. Which is Tell the big me. snaky boy. Oh, why? Why? I'm going to take this die that rolled a nat one last turn. I'm going to roll it again and hope for another bad roll. <laughs> no, I hit him. That's a 31. You have favorite enemy, Levi, right? No, uh, although I did forget. His favorite enemy, Levi's, is actually jeans. It has nothing to do with the snake. Yeah, he's, he's a Wrangler man. Um, <laughs> no, although I did forget the ask if those were aberrations, because that would have been cool uh, for previous attacks. Uh, ouch, 22 points of damage to his precious snake boy. Poor sneaky boy. Oh, does that mean they attack each other? Um, that means Levi is, is now attacking Tarazi. Yeah, and Tarazi's one round of confusion is over. And he realizes what he's done with horror. He's having a bad day. So, um, that brings us to the heroic Yangith, who is going to, it's going to do a full attack. Um, it's going to give itself a, a quick and true strike just, you know, on the first hit here, because why not, right? Uh, first claw is going to be a 44 to hit. Oh no, me? That totally hits. Yeah. Um, so that is 13 damage on claw number one. Claw number Adorable. two gonna seem a lot less climactic after that that's only a 19 to hit miss tentacle number one is a cracked die that is a 32 to hit that does hit um how does five damage sound uh hysterical 
You did get me into the double digits, though. Oh, no. Uh, 27 versus CMD on the free grapple. Nope. Yeah. Not too bad. That's uh, my tentacle. Guy. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next tentacle. Uh, that's right. We got more. 21. No. Miss. All right. Tentacle number three. Um, how about 26? Miss. Really? Yeah, man. You missed Dang. by um, a couple. Dang. All right. The final tentacle. Only a 25. Nah, man. Tarazi with the killer AC just taking all the shots from this tree and only having a couple actually break through on him. I don't think this tree is very happy. Or very happy tree. <laughs> Um, Kira, we are on round four of your confusion. How about that D100 roll? That's better. That's a 23. Kira acts normally. Yes. I can't see anyone or anything, and I shouldn't get close to my friends, but I'm going to do it anyway. Full round action to bedazzle something? Uh, I'm still so far away. I'm still so far away. Uh, So I guess I just move over here and see that I'm still far away. You don't want to go into a rage in anticipation of being right by your allies on the next confused round? I'm good. That's okay. You mean you're Uh, sure? You can. I'll let you. If you want to change your turn, it's fine. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't want to get in your way. I do appreciate it. I think I'm just going to chill far enough away from anyone that I can't accidentally hurt someone and call it a day. That's it. That's the one non-net bad thing I've done all night. All right. Uh, delightful Alwyn. Uh How about that confusion roll? Double zero and a three, so three. Uh, you act normally again. Okay. Uh, I am going to attempt to hit it with a spell, so I need to do uh, bow resistance. Yep. Uh, nope. That is a 14. Yeah, nothing happens. Okay, yeah. Spell just bounces off it. This tree's going to live forever. Uh, he is, though, then going to back up a bit, uh, stay in, like, eyesight of this thing, but just kind of make enough space that he's not anybody's closest uh, <laughs> target. The Braves are Alloin bravely runs away and that will be his turn yeah all right brixby brixby you're 30 feet in the air all right brixby ugly and unpleasant it's gonna roll a spell resistance roll that is a 29 uh 29 will beat its spell resistance excellent all right well everyone's favorite spell component some bat guano thrown roughly about here which is to the folks that are not inside our foundry uh, vaguely to the east of the yang yang sitch um so i'm gonna need you to roll a reflex save for me not the most reflexive oddly enough but that's not a bad roll 23 you do make it so I'm just going to roll what your half damage would be. So that is 21 points. So that would have been 42 if if you had not made that save. And what kind of damage is this? Fire. It's a fireball. Uh, burning up this beautiful forest. Yep. Brixby, known clear cutter, is going to move just a little bit back, like... 10 feet, stay at 30 feet, but moving uh, northwest, so away from the tree. That's going to be my turn. All right. Um, Levi and Tarazi do not need any confusion rolls this round, as Levi is going to attack Tarazi. Yeah, how do you want to play that? Do you want me to have Levi attack Tarazi first? I guess since since Levi went first last time, we'll we'll stick with that. Ha! 
His poor roll is in my favor. That was a natural three. He couldn't hope to scratch Tarazi. <laughs> uh, Tarazi doesn't even notice it's such a feeble attempt. Uh, we'll take a five foot step closer to uh, Yang Geith and unleash three power attack swings. Don't like it. Knowing it's a C, I know I have two hits. Uh, we're looking at the lower of those two being a 27. 29 if it's an aberration. It, it is an aberration. Because I'm so good at rangering. And uh, now I shall roll uh, 2d10 plus 32. So 37 points of damage. Not too bad, but it is still kicking. Fair. Well, do you have step up or step up and strike? Because it's going to take a five foot step away from you. I wish I did. All right. And then it's going to cast a spell and it's gone. A puff of, you know, purpley whatever. It seemed just whoosh. The heroic Zangief bravely lives to fight another day as it escapes all of you. Sadly, we do have some confusion rounds to deal with still. Uh, Kira, I believe this is your last one. Hey, nice. Is, is it nice? Is it nice now that there's nothing to attack? Uh, guess I'll just chill here. All right. And Alwyn, I believe you still have two rounds of confusion left, so let's do one. That is 50, so I think that's punch myself in the face, right? <laughs> Um, 50 is actually babbling coherently. Oh, nice. Okay, so it's 51 or higher as punch. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he just babbles again. <laughs> yeah, 51 is punch yourself in the face. All right, uh, Brixby, I assume you're coming down to fight the snake in the hand. <laughs> okay, no, I'm going to stay up here. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the extent of this. All right, me. um... Levi's still going after Tarazi. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, from reach, he'll just lash out. Uh, and that actually hits exactly. So, that's fun. A little payback. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to do 17 to Tarazi, and he gets that free grab attempt. <laughs> You've heard of player versus player, but now how about player versus self? Uh, thankfully, he whiffs on the grab attempt with a natural three. Uh, so at least Tarazi right. himself about... isn't uh, confused anymore, because that would be real and going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. This would be a, a death chain if, if Tarazi was still confused. But luckily, he's just got a turn, and his snake is turned on him. Yeah, and he knows better than to try and uh, I guess if you're confused you don't you can't take AOOs can you uh, so he can back away without worrying about a five foot step uh, just so he doesn't get you know just give him some room they gotta work some stuff out makes sense alright Kira you're no longer confused um do you still you want an action from me? Uh, I'll also back away from the snake. All right, Alowin, last round of confusion. That is a 32. Uh, once again, does nothing but babbles incoherently. <laughs> does Brixby want to do anything? Nope. All right, well, <laughs> that leaves us to um, Rattler Race as the nice. big snake chases the snakeman. Yep, and uh, he'll just move right up next to Tarazi and try and take a bite out of Graham. And miss. To which Tarazi will <laughs> Hit him run towards the west. <laughs> he knows he can't outrun Levi. Levi's move speed is higher. 
All right, is anyone going to try anything before Levi's final confused round here? Can drop him in a hole or hit him with sensory overload. <laughs> Save those spell slots. Uh, yeah. All right, so I think we got one last snake attack to deal with before we will be out of initiative. And another miss by five. And then kind of shakes his goopy head clear, and they both just kind of look at each other in dismay because neither of them wanted to hurt the other. And they have this kind of serpentine hug where the goopy or larger snake kind of gives them a friendly constrict and he just pats them back and they just kind of have a little moment. So the party not knowing that that's a thing and assume he's still being attacked and rushing to help. Kira does the same thing with the chainsaw. Hugs the chainsaw. <laughs> that's still running. Oh, running. <laughs> Brixby comes down, and by that I mean his droopy skin hits the ground first with his four <laughs> charisma. Things are very bad. Anyway, let me talk to you about the blockchain. Come here. Brix? You look gross. Thanks. I really can't keep acting this, like, full charisma character, because I, I know what's unpleasant, but I don't want to be unpleasant, so. Just going to pick my nose. If we're willing to spend the hundred gold for it, uh, Alowin can cast Restoration on him. Please. Do it. I will give you a hundred <laughs> gold. <right. laughs> uh, so Alowin will uh, rummage around in his pack and pull out a hundred gold worth of diamond dust because he made sure to get extra when uh, after the last time we had to use this for uh, the thousand gold. And he will blow a little bit onto Brixby and burn a level four spell to cast restoration, removing all drain from one attribute. Now at my wonderful eight, <laughs> everyone can enjoy the, the normal, normal, lovable Brixby. Northeastern <laughs> abrasiveness. Yeah. Is everyone all right? I hit myself in the face. Well, I mean, Tarazi took 35 points of lethal. Oh, God. oh that's right. Forgot about that. And yeah, it looks like otherwise Levi only took non-lethal. Do we want to quickly check the clearing, make sure we're good, and then do our healing and even possibly, I don't know, what time is it? Because they had like a campfire inside of a cave. Is it like late now? Yeah, like do we want to just rest for the night? Yeah. Um, I mean, you came in to the place in the morning and it definitely takes a while to explore because this is a big place, but it's probably still just the afternoon. Hmm. So they're just... Sitting in a cave, hate themselves at like 11 a.m. with a campfire. Ugh. All right. It's college. <laughs> yeah, they just got to keep keep the fires going so they can melt stuff, you know? Should still check this entire clearing before we do the healing. Well, has it been two hours since we left the Padawan fight? And therefore Levi would need to make his poison save. Ah, Good point. It probably has been at least two hours since then. Yeah, I was afraid of that. All right. I don't know how many rounds were left on this poison, if it has a duration of, you know, years. But let's just start rolling. A dirty 20 for the first one. All right. That's a pass. No damage. Yay. Let's get another one. Nah, that's a 15. Oof. So that is going to be me rolling the wrong die. That is max four con damage <laughs> as the Paluta poison finally runs its course through the goopy, goopy snake. But it, it did a heck of a lot of damage on its way out. Yeah. Ouch. This entire book is like 
Nice attributes. It'd be a shame <laughs> if someone damaged or trained them. Man. Like that is so far. Apparently you didn't want to have those stats on your sheet, right? Guess not. Halloween will uh, hit him with two lesser rests to give him uh, five con back. Well, thank you. And uh, I had forgotten this the last time we all had a bunch of non-lethal and I wasted a bunch of healing on it. But your non-lethal actually heals at your level per hour. So we can just like sit in this clearing for two hours and that'll heal our, all our non-lethal. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would take care of my non-lethal. Did we find anything in this clearing while we're like chilling? Um, if you search through it, you do find the source of the smell. There is a well-rotted humanoid body um, just like stuffed into the trees kind of around where Tarazi is standing now. That looks like somebody who has been dead for quite some time. Can we tell anything about the body? Does it have anything? Need to be that guy. Um, Well, it is a... The person is is wearing an equally rotted robe. They have... Basically, it looks like a chunk of ice kind of in one of their hands. Like this weird, like, kind of foot-long, like, ice ball. Which is weird because it's not like cold enough for a chunk of ice to be hanging out. Uh, there's also a backpack kind of under the body. Um, I can roll a spellcraft if required. I'm I'm sure that we'll also get one from Alwyn. That's a 34 from Bricks. Well, if you chip through the um, encasing of ice there, um, you find a bunch of frozen leaves and um, maybe, like, some skin from being frozen off by the ice thing. But down in the middle of it is a magical plus two cold Sikatite dagger. That's a sky metal, isn't it? Uh, Sikatite is indeed a sky metal. What does a Sikatite weapon do? Does it make it cold? It's a Sikatite burn. (laughs) Sikatite. I don't know how it's the... This is, this is better. Yours is better. Okay, so Sikatite is a silver-hued sky metal that emanates either intense cold or intense heat. It can ignite other substances or encase them in ice after enough contact. Scholars are confused as to why the two different but similar-looking metals um, exist, and if they're one metal or if they're two separate things, but this is indeed cold Sikatite, which can inflict cold damage in addition to, you know, the regular damage. Uh, And while uh, Brixby is examining that, Alowin cast his uh, last Cure Light Wounds Mass of the day and also did a couple of regular Cure Light Wounds onto Tarazi, so I think we should all be good if we wait like an hour or two to get rid of the non-lethal on top of that. Awesome. So what about that backpack? Uh a sitch? Um, if you crack open that backpack, you find a wealth of technological parts that look pretty interesting and like fairly functional. Um, I think to an interested party, these would be worth a good 3,500 gold. And uh, there's also a scroll tube with two oh. scrolls. Okay, I love that. Do we need to roll another spellcraft on that bad boy? Uh, yeah, if you could. All right, I got you. Say 30 We're seven. looking at two scrolls of Destroy Robot. Ooh. <laughs> what is that spell even? I don't know. I haven't looked up the spell. Um, it sounds like it does something bad to robots. Neat. It's a, it's a six-level sorcerer slash wizard spell. Oh, <laughs> tight. I can't even cast it yet. You attempt to destroy any one robot in range. When you cast a spell, your hand crackles with electricity. You must succeed at a ranged touch attack. The target takes 12d6 points of damage plus one per caster level. Or 3d6 plus one on a successful saving throw. A cyborg or android can be damaged by this spell, but takes half damage and gets a plus four bonus on the saving throw. So it's like disintegrate specifically for robots interesting that's awesome 
I would say, since it's not on the spell list of a ranger or a blood rager, maybe Brixby would keep one to copy down and give the other one to uh, Alowin. Because you could cast that. Uh, looks like Skrull Tube had magic. You know, it's very long. And he's like thumbing through the canonically like six pages. Something about destroying robots to probably make our friends in the cave quite happy. No, like, I care. They were weird. So, that, uh, spell, the tree casts, the Yengith, uh, casts, couldn't have sent them that far, honestly. They probably went somewhere into the woods. Well, nobody rolled, nobody rolled a spellcraft on what the spell was. You're right. Could have been teleport. Probably should have. You are right. What does a 39 tell us? (laughs) These rolls are ridiculous. Yeah, I unfortunately only got an 8 on the die, but that's still a 28, so does that give us an 8? That was a greater teleport. This thing could be anywhere. Oh, no. Oh, no. That is a level 6 spell. This thing is a higher spellcaster than any of us. <laughs> they get a one a day greater teleport. Oh, they do what geez. they want. Do we see like a farmstead around? Are we to assume this is a farmer or is this something we encountered on the way to the farm? Uh, you haven't yet gotten to where um, Harab said the farmer would be. Okay. I was wondering about the farmer and his robe. You know, maybe we caught him, you know. <laughs> caught him at night yeah. he was feeding the, <laughs> feeding the cat uh, yeah you know those farmers who go out in their robes and backpacks yeah <laughs> well I think we're gonna leave this terrible place alright yeah I mean it looks like that was about all there was here did you spend the, a couple hours just to rest up your non-lethal damage one hour would get rid of almost all of mine yeah, I mean, I'm good. Tarazi's only down one now. It's at a robust 111 HP. Ooh. Spicy. That's just showing off. So, continuing ar- around on the um, southern edge of the valley, and y- you follow it along, and there's more of these caves everywhere, but things seem quieter now that you're out of the woods. Eventually, you come to a place where the valley's walls rise up to a 40-foot bluff, and underneath this bluff, there's a single cave entrance sitting at ground, at ground level. The opening of it hung with strings of bones, twigs, and bits of metal, and tiny fetishes crafted out of fiber and leaves. And closer to you, like between you and this cave, uh, are five like beds of strangely colored vegetables and fruits. A few fruit trees are growing nearby, shielding the view of the garden from most directions, but because you're coming at it from the west, you can see into it. So as you approach this, you see an older-looking man, like, pottering away in the field. He's got long, graying hair, and his frame and movements are shaky as he seems to be doing some yard work amongst these strange-looking plants. The most notable thing about him is that one of his legs below the knee is like a metal peg leg. And he's, you know, kind of like the androids, just taking absolutely no notice of you as you're approaching. He just seems to be working and absorbed in, like, weeding and, like, whispering things to the plants. Just moving from bed to bed. Someone that Thalpin and Kifkin would probably have a have an ale with can I roll a knowledge nature on uh, what is growing here yeah sure it's a nat one for a 15 plants looks like plants nice plants only an 11 from Tarazi he also notices that they're plants there's definite plants here does a dirty 20 get anything Uh, with dirty 20 I mean I think Alwyn sees that there are some weird apples, weird carrots, like weird peppers and mushrooms and stuff, but he, I don't think, can tell anything really specific about them. 
They do, they seem to be food crops, but they don't look right. Don't underestimate Alwyn's fruit knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do I get a bonus? <laughs> fruit wizard feels like these don't look <laughs> like normal fruits. Yeah. Like normal, like they're going to attack us like the tree's not normal, or this guy's trying to grow crops in irradiated wasteland, not normal. Maybe more of the second. <laughs> okay. But does Brixby actually yell nice plants? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with that roll, <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, the guy, like, stops what he's doing and kind of jumps and, um, like, looks up as you all approach and goes, Ah! Imagining green growing things all or all the world, I sometimes forget that flesh walks the earth as well. Hi, I'm flesh. <laughs> Hello, flesh. I'm Peter. Sometimes flesh slithers as well. Hello, Peter. Hello, slithering flesh. And and how about the rest of you? I'm just walking. Just just walking. Hello. I'm pretty sure I'm made of flesh. It's nice to meet you. So we have s walking, slithering, just walking, and pretty sure you're made of flesh. I got it. I, I'll remember those. And I, I said my name, right? Did I say my name? My name's Peter. I said my name. You know my name. You know me. Hello. What? Hi. What brings you Hi. here? We're fruit enthusiasts. <laughs> That's it. We just love fruit. Ah, I too love fruit. I love all the green things of nature. It's good to have fellow plant enthusiasts in this cursed place. Yeah, like, what are you growing here besides, well, I mean, like, the plants, but I trust you have some nuance for me. Oh, um, well, that, uh, that's just, you know, your simple food crops, eh? There's uh, apples and uh, carrots and uh, mushrooms and, and over there there's a patch of peppers. They're they're coming along reason reasonably well. How do these things look? They just like cool, delicious. They look like just kind of off. Like if you look at the apples, like they might be seem like a little bit bioluminescent. And the carrots, maybe they look like normal carrots, except for the fronds are kind of like really stiff and like almost woody in their growth. And the the mushrooms like definitely have a weird smell to them and they look oily. And the peppers are just like super, super bright colors, like reds and oranges and yellow, like unnaturally bright. The stuff that's growing here has been influenced by something outside of the natural world. Um, and you don't necessarily know that those things are safe to eat. You, uh, so you eat these. Who else do you, do you just grow this for, like, subsistence? Or do you do, like, a very weird farmer's market here? No, 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 no. These are, I grow, uh, what I, what I can eat and, uh... And I grow it for the land, you know. We, they're trying to bring the green back into this cursed place. There's uh, yeah, everything we can grow, everything that'll take hold, everything helps. Everything helps to to bring the nature back, bring bring the green back. Yes, yes. And like he's weirdly watery eyed as he's talking, and like very unfocused. You eat these. Oh, yes, they're, they're very good here. And he'll, like, pull an apple off of a tree nearby and, like, totter his way over and hold it out to Kira. So here, it's it's, it's good. It's it's delicious. Yeah, Kira will take the apple and smell it. And as he approaches and gets closer, does a 26 heel check give a, any indication as to what's up with this dude? He is definitely suffering from like your very familiar stuff um of a bunch of ability damage but like it seems fairly permanent like like he's been in an altered state for a long time it's not clear exactly what happened to him but you've run into a bunch of things that can do that sort of thing 
If, uh, I wonder if the fruit is giving, like, a weaker version of the same effect as, like, Numerian fluids, because it's, like, sucking up all that stuff from the soil. <laughs> Don't eat that apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. I'm going to um, save this for later when I'm hungry. Sure, sure. Well, there's more where that came from. I, I've got plenty to, to share. Don't you worry. It's good, 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 good stuff. So, my guy, my dude, uh, what, what brought you out here? Oh, the trees. The trees called to me and... And the flowers, the flowers asked for my help to bloom. And the carrots, the carrots gave me their muffled pleas for aid from beneath the earth. The carrots, they do entreat, indeed. Um, but where, from what far-flung corner of this, as you say, cursed plain, did you come from originally? And he sort of <laughs> stares at Brixby out of blankly for like an uncomfortably long time <laughs> and then he says I no I I have I've been here all my life yeah I came here as a boy I have always been here in this land helping to usher it and heal it sorry if you believe it I was even like less charismatic like boy half before, but I'm gonna be direct. What happened to you, like? What about my leg? Uh, got a. That's that's metal. That's it. That's not your flesh, is it? Uh, he looks down at it. And does it seems fine to me? Doesn't seem very of nature. It's the way it's always been. I'm not the best person for. Roll vibe. I'm gonna roll a sense motive on my guy here. And maybe be like, oh yeah, no, I'm certainly not gonna encourage myself and my friends to sense your motive. Twelve. He, he seems to genuinely be confused by the question. Eighteen, give the same thing. Same kind of vibe. Yeah, he, he, he just had his confused by the idea that his leg is anything other than his it's like leg. It's a metal peg like, right? And it's like a jointed metal peg, but it's still oh. a, so it's like somebody welded like the bottom half of a robot leg onto his knee. So he looks a little bit closer to like Connor? I expected more of like a weird old plant yeah, like Long John Silver thing. <laughs> yes. And it, it's not like a, a powered leg, but it looks like maybe it could have been at some point. Yeah, don't tell the uh, the followers of the prophet, or they'll throw his leg into the fire. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm, I apologize. Um, I am quite rude by nature, and I'm working on it. So I'm sorry. Um, it was like a weird question to ask. I just the emphasis on the nature, but the juxtaposition of the, the metal. I had to ask. It's, um, it's an old place, but if this is your calling, um, it's respectable. It is most rewarding to, to bring this land back from its desolation, from the all those terrible things that the butchers have done to it. I must... I must chip away at the damage. Chip, chip, chip away. Do you get many visitors here, Peter? I heard of a four-armed person that was seen across the river. And, uh, he smiles at the mention of the, the four-armed person. And he says, ah, ha, ha, the four-armed lady, she... She is from the stars. She fights with weapons from the stars. She's not the butchers. She's no butcher, but she is not from here. She is not one of us. I do not trust what she does with the weapons from the stars, but her hatred of the butchers 
tells me that she is a kindred spirit in her own way. I see. Do you know her name or where to find her? She dwells in the machine caves. I I can I could show you where it is. That would be most appreciated. And he'll sort of use his stick to sketch out like a, a little bit of a drawing of the scar of the spider. And you can see like where you are. The machine cave he indicates is like north across the water and then like into a sort of sub valley up there through some woods and, and stuff. And the, he points it out as a, sort of in a, a corner to the north. Was that that is where she dwells? Thank you, Peter. Of course, of course. Anything for a friend. These other ones that you keep speaking of, these butchers, they sound dangerous. Is there anything you can tell us about them so we know what to look out for? Oh, the butchers. The butchers come from the darkness. The deep darkness birthed them, disgorged their malevolence. The stars wink at the horrors mercifully beyond our ken. They came from the dark tapestry. They did terrible things to me. They gave me to the flare, and she unmade me and remade me and unmade me again, and then I escaped, and I recovered through my own strength of will and resumed my work. So I didn't remake you with that. Sorry again to ask, but it's unique to see. Your leg. Did that come from the flayer? My leg is my leg. I, I don't know why you're so obsessed with my leg. All right, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, like I said, hanging rat face. I'm going to stop. I'll back up. Does a uh, 25 tapestry lore give anything on someone who might be called the flayer? Um, I don't think... The tapestry lore is going to tell you anything about the flayer without knowing more. Would it give anything about, like, just the idea of, like, butchers, or... And the the butchers definitely seems to be a name that Peter has, has made for these things. Yeah, it's not anything that anyone else would have called them, yeah. But he's mentioned that they came from the dark tapestry, which is, I mean, un, untold eldritch horrors are said to lurk in the darkness between the stars, so... I think, honestly, even without getting anything from that, I think Alowen would say, this is potentially a very dangerous place. He's talking about creatures that serve the gods, not your gods, but the real ones. Powerful. Hmm. I think all of us are a bit too small speak of the proportional power of gods but I heed your warning <sighs> Peter you've been here as long as you can remember aside from the butchers and the flayer what else do we have to fear here as your friends well the uh, the butchers I think are the uh, the vast majority of the horrors of the valley, they are the ones who are digging away at nature. They are poisoning the land. They are leaching into the water. They are unmaking. He does that thousand-yard stare again. Um, uh, there are there are monsters of of the more mundane sort throughout the valley, but they, if you know what you're doing, you, you can hide from them you can you can move amongst the trees and, and keep out of their way you have to know the signs know when the trees are not trees know when the spiked dragons lurk know when the the giants are coming you you can always get away you can always run and hide so there's there's a a, a man came through here recently i I don't know if he was friend or foe. He had the he had the stink of of the rifts on him. He um he visited me briefly. But he I I don't know if he was an ally or an enemy. He may still be within the valley or he may have left. 
What did he want, and what did he look like? Uh, he yeah, he was a man. He was a a man with a sword with with uh, horns on his head. He was looking for. He like snaps his fingers and like turns his head. He he was looking for. He was looking for the Technic League agents who came here months and months and months ago. He was searching for them. And did you meet them, those Technic League agents? Oh, yes, they were here. They they came through. They had questions. They had so many questions. Questions like you do. Questions about the machines. They were uncouth. They were rude guests, and they overstayed their... Welcome, but they finally left me alone once I told them of the machines that served the butchers deeper in the scar. They seemed intrigued and angry that the butchers controlled the machines. They spoke of confronting the butchers, but they have not come back. I suspect that they found the butchers to be more than they could handle. I hope they did. They were so very rude to me. First off, we love your weird fruit, and this is another big weird fruit aficionado right here. Huge weird fruit fan. Um, for Halloween. I'm sure you can talk weird fruit shop <laughs> later. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> that looks like. Uh, I just have one question before you both discuss kumquats and persimmons and, and Buddha's hands and whatnot. Um, what do butchers look like? They, they skitter like crabs. They walk upright with four arms. They have black scales growing green. They scale the walls and the ceilings as a man walks the earth. Can we roll anything on that? <laughs> <laughs> is there any knowledge to roll on that? Or is that just like, oh boy, that sounds un real unpleasant. Though. I mean, you could, tr you could try a very difficult um, lore, dark tapestry, or knowledge dungeoneering? I'll try very difficult knowledge dungeoneering. That's a 12. Uh, 12's not going to do it for you. Not good enough. 24. It sounds like he might be conflating multiple things, but it's hard to tell. And I think as you're talking this over with Peter and, and getting an understanding of just what you're looking at in the Scar of the Spider that he's lived in forever. I'm going to bed. Good night, Sam and Peter. Good night, Fruit. Good night, Sam. Good night, Irradiated Fruit. Good night, Sam. Against the Machine is property of Network Against the Machine LLC, all rights reserved. Pathfinder and the Iron Gods Adventure Path are property of Paizo Publishing. See their website for more details. The theme Against the Machine was written and performed by your own Zach. See the show notes for additional music and sound licensing. If you enjoyed the show, we encourage you to leave us a review. Good night. Waveforms. 200 foot waveforms. So many waveforms. Can forms. opener bridge. Can opener. Can opener. Can you pin you? <laughs> Can you pin you? <laughs> Correct. Zoom in. I hope I don't kill this snake. Oh, yeah, wait. wait you, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to take you all up on the disc. I'm taking Terraza and, and Levi up on my disc, and we're just going to hang out up here until you all are chill. Everybody's just <laughs> going to fly away. Levi's got that 20-foot climb speed. We could just go up a tree. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, Sweet. straight up well, the tree. She certainly doesn't have a cutting the, mechanism. The tree is me. Like a chainsaw oh, yeah, versus that's... tree. <laughs> I was so excited for chainsaw versus tree. I was so excited. Hey, you have a one in four it's chance. Be weakness and everything. You have unfortunately a two in four chance of chainsaw versus snake. Boop. I can give myself some sort of status for that. Why are they all so small? I'm so old. <sighs> you got. Yeah, you got to zoom way, way into. I assume there's a module that fixes that. Status icons for olds. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Please end my turn. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like such a, I'm just boomering through Foundry right now, and I'm not doing a good fair. Boop. It's a sick of tight burn. I'm going to edit that so I sounded less like a moron and more like cool. Boop. I'm trying to pull up the rules for Sycotite, and my browser has decided to hang on me. Shouldn't have used Edge. Mm -hmm. If we could just temporarily make this weapon in 2e and transfer that plus 2 rune over, that, that would work. Mm -hmm. That makes Henry? sense. Is that, is that an I option? Don't, I don't think so. I don't have <laughs> the, the um, official rules on... Jumping <laughs> additions and then jumping back. Did you try searching for one of the James Jacobs comments on the Pathfinder forum? I did not. Boop. I want a glow apple. <laughs> it sounds kind of cool. Glapple. Gla exactly. You've heard about grapples before. It's It can't be any difference than that or any that much different than that. Grapples are terrible. <laughs>